Manchester United taking on Aston Villa. Now we've got three games in a few days time. Really difficult period in terms of Manchester United's squad and overall depth. Now we've seen other teams fuck up. We've seen Leicester fuck up. We've seen another top four challenger Tottenham fuck up. And it does look like Manchester United are certain to definitely get in the top four anyway. But look certain to finish second now with obviously that massive fuck up from Leicester last night. So it does look like that is done, but we've still got crucial games to play and there's no way he's gonna rotate the squad and play a load of reserves, but I'm hopeful that he will utilize the squad over these three games. It's just a bit of a kick in the nuts that we've got Leicester and Liverpool coming up on the horizon because there's no way he's gonna rest and rotate so many key players for them games, certainly not the Liverpool one. And to be honest, I'll be happy if that game just got fucked off and we just and they just gave each team a bloody point or even we fucking just throw it off and we got no points because to be honest, we, we've got a Europa League final to worry about and we're going to finish second regardless unless we get a points deduction for what we've done in the protests for the Glazers. But besides that, we're definitely going to finish second. So I don't really care so much about these games. Them games are just about pride now for me and for Manchester United. I want to go out there and win that Europa League desperately to end the season on at least a bit of a high for Manchester United. It won't be what we want to win. It's not the beer, the beer on end of, of where Manchester United go in the future, but if we can win that and then improve on the squad, get two or three good players in the first team regulars next season that are going to take this team to that next level, then that is where Manchester United need to be. Now, going into this game, they've got problems with injuries. They've still got their main man, Jack Grealish out, which has been a massive blow for them. And I think it's been that, I mean, they were well up there at one point, and I'm not too sure where they are in the league at this moment. I think they're around sort of just above mid-table, are they, around that period? But at one point they were doing doing really good and they're a real difficult team to beat and Jack Grealish has been out for so long their main man but they've still got other good players and their main man at this moment in time is Ollie Watkins has got himself into the England fold in the last time out in the international break and probably just about deserved it because with a couple of key players out injured he can easily get back in that reckoning for England He's come up from the championship and he's done really well for them, scored a number of goals and he is the main one for Manchester United to keep an eye on in this game. They've had some good results this season, most notably that one against Liverpool where they walloped seven past them earlier in the season. So they've not had a bad season at all. But Manchester United have got to go into this game as favourites. If we can get this job done in this game, we won't need many points to actually secure that second position mathematically. I think we only need about a point against Leicester then to actually mathematically claim it. So I'm expecting changes in this game, but not so many changes. There may be changes later on in the week against Leicester. It, if, or, or maybe even there might be a bit of rotation against Liverpool if Liverpool can't get the get in the Champions League if they drop any points this weekend and can't get in the Champions League then that'll be a dead rubber anyway and both teams are probably not going to be that arsed there's not going to be the edge on it that there was I mean it's a midweek game so the edge is taken off it anyway so we will have to wait and see but he's going to rotate the squad at some point in these games and I wouldn't expect it expect any different from this game De Gea will come out Dean Henderson will be back in goal be the usual bat for I was surprised Bailey coming in the week but he didn't look good enough to me in that game just too many injury problems for him and I just don't see why we've given him a new contract to be honest unless we're looking to sell him and we feel that we can get more money giving him a longer deal I'm not too fucking sure but he, he doesn't deserve one on the basis of his injury problems but it should be Lindelof Maguire then it should be Juan Bissaka and Shaw as the fullbacks the fullbacks come off at half time in that game so they're rested ready for this game then it's going to be back to Fred and McTominay in midfield. I reckon someone else is going to come out in the in the forward positions. I've got a feeling it may be Pogba actually comes out. Rashford goes on the left, Greenwood goes on the right, and then you've got Bruno Fernandes and Cavani up front. But it could also be Cavani comes out for this one because we saw against Liverpool Cavani was going to be on the substitutes bench for that one if the team had actually gone ahead with what it was going to be. Or it could be Greenwood come out. So it'd be one of them three, I think. I think Rashford will come back into the start. He's not going to drop uh, Bruno Fernandes for this game, I don't believe. But I think all them players will not play in all three of the games. Cavani, Pogba and Greenwood. I don't think all three of these games coming up against Villa, Leicester and Liverpool. I don't think any of them three players are going to feature in all these games. So 
but it is a bit of Italian. So, I, mean, I, I personally think it's going to be the Pulp or, or Greenwood come out for this one because I mean Greenwood played the whole game midweek and Cavani did come off, so I would expect Cavani probably to start this one. But at this moment in time, he is in fucking fire. He is the main man, Manchester Schneider. Got to be looking to in this game if he does start in order to grab the goals for Manchester United to get us through this game. Now, I think he's got to start as number nine in most games, when Manchester, certainly in the important games anyway, and this is probably the most important one just to get the job done, to seal that second position almost for good, because then Manchester United can concentrate on looking ahead to maybe rotating for that Europa League final. And I don't think when Greenwood's played, I think it's one guy in 13, is it? In the, in the Premier League when, or in all competitions when Greenwood started a striker. I don't know if he likes to play that position or not. I'm not sure if he's, he's in favour of it, but I don't feel that he has been good enough in that striking position yet. And whether he can be in the future remains to be seen. But I think he's far better on the right. So if you're not going to play him on the right, then I think you've got to put him on the bench and bring someone else in to, and, and rotate a bit. But the only problem is if you do take Greenwood out from the right-hand side and keep Pogba in, then you're, pro you're going to probably end up playing Rashford out on the right. And I'm, I think Rashford's better out on the left-hand side. And with James, I think he's still injured. So I I've got a feeling, that's why I've got a feeling that it will be Greenwood on the right and Pogba on the, I mean, and Rashford on the left and Pogba comes out for this one because... I'm not sure there's someone else to play on that right-hand side apart from Ahmad and he doesn't seem to want to play Ahmad at this moment in time which is a bit of a concern that Manchester United haven't given Ahmad any game time because he is a right winger or, or a player that has predominantly played on that hand, right-hand side and with the reports that the game stronger of Jadon Sancho potentially still coming to Manchester United uh, in the summer with the price tag being lowered and obviously Chelsea are another team that are interested in him as well but if Manchester United go out there and sign him, then we're going to have three players for that right hand, uh, right wing position in Greenwood, uh, Sancho and Ahmad. And you can only play one at a given time. Yes, we need to rotate, but does that limit Ahmad's chances of getting into the Manchester United team unless we play him in a different position, maybe on the left-hand side? I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see there. But I think Manchester United have got enough about them going forward to get the victory in this game. I do. I'm not, I'm not sure that Villa are going to be... I mean, they're still a decent outfit and they could cause Manchester United problems, but our away form has been pretty good this season for Manchester United. As I say, Ollie Watkins being, being that main threat up front for Manchester United. We have, we've got a very good record, a decent record over the years against Aston Villa, so I'd expect that to continue in this game. I wouldn't expect it to be a big scoreline for Manchester United, but if we can just get the job done, tick over, get the three points and move on to the next one, because the next two games are home games and there's going to be a lot of protests coming out. I believe for for them games, so get this job, get the job done of getting that top, that top two position sealed before them protests come out against the Glazers because this could get a, could get a bit tricky in in them games in Manchester United. Of course, a lot of problems going into them. Maybe the games could get delayed an hour or so against Leicester. I don't know. That's an earlier kickoff against Leicester at six, I think, uh, six o'clock UK time. So there would be time if the game got moved to maybe move it an hour or so, but. I don't know what's going to happen there, but Manchester United just got to get this fucking job done in this game. I, I, I believe we've got enough about us to get in behind, behind them and get the job done. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on this and what do you think the future is for Manchester United going into these remaining games? Do you think that maybe Manchester United could bring a number of youngsters in for the last couple of games? If we, if we get through this week, then we're going to have Fulham and Wolves. Fulham have been pretty shit this season and going down. And Wolves have been nowhere near at their best this season. So, do you think that maybe Manchester United could, in theory, rest some players for them games? Maybe bring in the likes of Shuratiri and Ahmad to the fold and maybe Alanga or, or Hannibal to uh, Medjbri for the final couple of games of the season. Maybe one or two will be along the subject's bench for one game and maybe a couple will be along the subject's bench for another. We will have to wait and see what happens there. But let me know your thoughts about that situation and anything else regarding the protests and everything else let me know your thoughts in that comment section below like the video subscribe if you're new around here it really does i really do appreciate it and share this video on facebook if you're watching it there and i'll talk to you all again soon see ya